Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome. This is a live studio tour. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and I do a live show on my social media platforms. It's called Quilt Conversations Live, and I use a lot of tech to go live. So I'm going to share my studio space. Did you see that little video? Let's take a look. I want to show you the studio. Here is a still shot of the tech that's right in front of me right now. This is what I am looking at. I'm going to go through the tech with you to share with you the lights, the microphone, the uh, stream deck, the monitor, the computer, everything. We're going to look at all of it. Let's take another look of the video. This is my live streaming studio. It is in the middle of my sewing and quilting studio. I found space where there was none. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze, folks. It's tight, but I am making it work. So no matter what space you have, you can make it work. You see my sewing machine back there? I go on the other side of this table when I need to sew or quilt. That's right. We're going to go over my overhead camera rig. You can see there on the left. We're going to look at the teleprompter and monitor that I use. My um, laptop that I use to monitor streams. The lights that are in the background. This is a studio tour, live streaming. And my hope is that the tech I use is going to help you figure out perhaps you need to increase or level up your live streaming tech or you're just getting started and you want to start by taking advantage of the Prime Early Access deals. There are a lot of deals right here in the carousel, so go take a look. Go take a look. Let's get started. Let's look at that and we're going to go through them one by one but before we do let's look at some early uh prime early access deals that are not in this photo okay host view i am going to first mention some new monitoring headphones i got these from sure my friends at sure pass these on to me and I want to share them with you. These are amazing wireless noise canceling headphones. You can pair them to your cell phone. You can pair them to your computer. They are fantastic. Let's take a look. I have some videos that I shot for you. Let's take a look. You can get it in white or black. I have both in the carousel, and these are part of the early access deals. Take advantage of this fabulous price. These are fantastic. Again, I just got them, and I'm excited about how I'm going to use them. They come with an app so that you can use it with your phone, you can use it on your computer. It's Bluetooth connected. It has a beautiful case. I love it. Let's do an unboxing. So here is the Ionic 40. Here we go. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Now, always remember that you want to read the instructions, read the instructions, read the instructions to get the most out of whatever you buy. The instructions are simple and clear. Sure has done a great job with getting you started quickly on using these headphones, headsets. You can use them for monitoring. You can use them for phone calls. You can use them for listening to music, monitoring your live stream. And there's the uh, QR code so you can scan for the app. Download it to your phone and then you pair it to your phone or computer. The case is fabulous. Nice case, nice, soft. I love it. It's sturdy. They show you how to put the headsets back in the case. There is a unique way to do it. This is everything that you get with it. You get a USB cord. There you go. You're going to connect that. 
so that you can listen to your, um, so that you can charge. You use that to charge. That's what I did. I use it to charge. And then, of course, you're going to use it wirelessly. You're going to connect via Bluetooth to listen to your phone or computer audio. And there is an image on the bottom of the case to show you how to put the headset back in the case. You want to follow those instructions. It's going to take a little while to figure out how to turn it to get it back in, but you will. You'll figure it out and just use the diagram. All right, so let's take a real close look. On each of the sides, left and right, you have some buttons. You have your power button, your volume control, you have the USB connection for charging, you have the headphone jack right there, and then the other side has, um, what is that side? That's the Bluetooth connection, that's the Bluetooth. And other things. Remember, hey Phil, nice to see you here again. Thank you for dropping by. Awesome, love it. You are always so encouraging. I appreciate you. Thank you. It's easy to turn and you don't feel like you're going to break them. I like that. Easy to turn, to put on your ears. Now, my head is big. I confess. I like that it has those extensions so that you can fit it around multiple head sizes. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be funny. I do have a big head. <laughs> There's your right and left ear indication to show you how to put it on correctly. It Now it's soft. It's very soft to the touch. I have not tried to see how long I could wear them based on that softness uh, for an extended period of time. That's something that I will have to test. I've only had these for a couple of weeks now. Don't forget, read the instructions. Figure out how to use them to get the most out of it. So now here's that diagram, <laughs> how to put the headsets back in the case. And you're going to see me fiddle around with it. And you're going to do the same thing, but you will get the hang of it. Once you figure it out, you use the diagram in the case and that diagram that comes on the piece of cardboard. There's a ledge. You put the headrest part on the ledge and that's was the key for me using that ledge and then i just check with the diagram and it looks fine so i'm all set i'm going to show you how you can pair it to your phone and also when you get it it's going to have some charge you're going to have just enough charge to probably pair it with one device and that that's what i was able to do and then when you turn it on, you're going to hear a little voice. It's going to say pairing. It's going to say on. It's going to say low power. And I got the low power notification. So I um, had to charge it up. And it tells you all the functions and the instructions, the quick start guide, what each button does. Every button has multiple functions. So make sure you look at those instructions. You see that? There it is. That is the pairing, the Bluetooth. It's searching, right? Here's my phone. It's going to show you. There it is. Sure Ionic 40. You tap it. I opened up my Bluetooth settings. Once you tap it, it's going to say connected. And now my phone is connected. It's just that easy. Easy, easy, easy. And now here's the USB to charge it. It's going to be charged. And you can do, get this, you can charge it for 15 minutes to get five hours of use. That's a plane ride from coast to coast. <laughs> it can last a whole plane ride, five hours, as long as there's no um, headwinds. <laughs> if it's a, a short ride, five hours, it'd be better if there was a tailwind, right? Pushing you along. So I love these headphones. Fabulous, black or white. Follow the instructions. You will get a lot of use out of these. All right, so let's take a look at the next thing that's in the carousel. And that is in-ear, in-ear. 
there are multiple ways that you can monitor your live stream when you are live. You can use in-ear monitors or you can use headsets. And the wireless Ionic were a, a headsets that you could use for monitoring your live stream. But you can also use in-ear. Let's take a look at, these are the Sure. Again, these were sent to me by Sure. And the opinions I share are my own. They are not telling me what to say or anything like that. Uh, so just wanted to let you know that. These are the purple. They come in multiple colors. I got the purple set. And we're going to do, again, an unboxing so that you can see in detail what these in-ear monitors can do. These are professional-level in-ear monitor um, earbuds. Here's the box, the SE215. And it is um, comfortable. It has a detachable cable. It has a two-year warranty. It's sound isolating earphones, sound isolating earphones. Let's do an unboxing so you can see what you get. So when you order yours and it comes in, you're going to open it up and you're going to get several things to help you get nice sound for ear. Um, hello. Thank you for following. I appreciate you. You get a case with a little clip on the end, a little mesh um, pocket on the inside. You get instructions. Always read the instructions. The best way to get the most out of anything you buy is to read the instructions. All right, so here are the in-ear noise canceling, noise isolating, not canceling, isolating. And there is a special way to put in earbuds, and it takes a while, at least it does for me, to figure out how to put them on. Notice, here's a nice close-up shot. Look at the, the black tips that are going to go in your ears. Those are really soft. When you squeeze them, they flatten. And so I would squeeze it, flatten it, then put it in my ear and it will expand and fill in the shape of my ear. And it will do the same for you. So you're going to press on it, put it in your ear, and then it will expand to fit and have a nice snug fit in the ear. I like having something that's going to fit in my ear. Actually, I've had problems with other earbuds really fitting in nicely. So you have this nice little, I guess you call it a cinch. I'm not sure what you call it, but you're able to put it around the back and then tighten it up on the back of your neck, on the nape of your neck, so that it's a nice snug fit around your ears. And then you get some extra ear covers. You get three sizes, small, medium, and large. So we all have unique features and they've offered in this pack multiple sizes. So you want to get something that's going to give you that option. Earbuds, these are professional sound isolating earphones. You want to get clear sound when you are monitoring your live stream. And it's especially important when you're doing, say, interviews or you're in a group setting. It's just a good idea. So there is the standard 3.5 millimeter plug that you're going to plug into your laptop or into any a computer of any kind. There's the Shure branding on there. And this was interesting that on one side, the opposite side, you're going to see not the SE215, but just above that, you're going to see the letter L or R. And that's going to tell you which ear the earbud goes in, the, the earphone goes in. It's on both. 215, and then there's the R at the top. That's for your right ear. And also on the black connection, it also has a letter, L and R, to make sure you connect it to the right earbud. Don't forget, read the instructions. You have good instructions with diagrams, what to do, what not to do. 
and the specifications. These are fantastic earbuds. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love, love, love Sure products. So take a look. You know what? Let me go back. I'm going to go back one because I want to show you something. All right. It's going to start from the beginning, but I'm going to bring it um, forward some. Let's see if I can bring it forward. Um, I'm going to have to do something else. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll just use my overhead camera. That's what I'll do. I'll use my overhead camera. All right, here we go. So what I wanted to show you is that you have this section here. This section here to here is what you're going to wrap around your ear. And you, when you bend it, it will keep the shape. It will wrap around your ear. See how it it bends? It's made to do that. So here it is straightened out and then you can bend it right around your ear to fit nice and snugly. And you want that. Okay, that's what I want to show you with the ear earphones for live streaming. You want to be able to monitor your live stream. All right, next in the carousel are extensions. Well, it is Amazon Basics. My whoops this is limited in length right it stops this is how long it is right let me go to the overhead camera again so to connect this to my computer which is a few feet away from me would be impossible and to be able to wear it so i have the amazon basics um, extension. It comes in right here and then I can attach it to my computer. Let's see if I can get this. It's snugly. All right, here we go. I'm going to show you one end, the end that's not connected to the computer. So here it is. This is the Amazon Basics and I would attach it here to the earbuds, and then the other end would go into my computer so that if I needed to stand up or move around, I wouldn't be tethered. I'd have more freedom. So that is a prime early access, this Amazon Basics uh, auxiliary connection for your headphones or earbuds, anything with audio, you can have that extension, right? All right, wanted to share that with you. Okay, so what is next in the carousel? The next item is my new microphone. I have a new mic. I've up-leveled my audio for live streaming. And that is number one in our photo. I'm going to go back to the studio. There it is, number one. That is the setup that I have. That is the... Shure MV7. Shure MV7. It's both XLR and USB. I'm using USB connection. So let's take a closer look at this MV7. Here it is. This is the Shure MV7 USB and XLR. You will see there on the back, there's the XLR connection, the USB, and headphones. Not only that, you are able to control a lot of the microphone features on the mic itself, or you can use an app to customize or use the auto setting. That is an easy way by using it right there on the mic, or you can use the app. Let's do an unboxing. So here's the MV7, great podcast mic, great live streaming microphone. Use it on a stand or use it on a boom arm. I'm using an arm and I'll show that to you a little bit later. So we're going to open it up and see what you get when you 
purchase this. Podcasting, home recording, gaming, welcome to Better Sound. I like that little invite. (laughs) That's a nice welcome. So let's see what we get in the box. We get the microphone. We get instructions that you're going to read so that you get the most out of it. You want to make sure that you read the instructions. I like a microphone that's going to help me improve my audio, give me professional quality, but also give me the options to upgrade later. And that's what this MV7 does. The USB is one way of using it, but you can use it with an XLR. There are the controls at the top. There's the headphones. And now here is the mute button on the other side. You can mute it right there on the microphone again, or you can use the app. And if you are afraid that you're going to turn the mic off or change the gain, you can always lock the settings. There's your headphone jack and the XLR. Then you have a way to connect it to a stand or to a boom arm. It does not come with that. That is sold separately. Now, let's take a look at what cords we get. We get some USB cords, right? We got because it's a USB and XLR, and so you get cords with it. You get other material. Make sure you read everything that comes in the box, warranty information, quick start guide, everything that you need to get the most out of the mic. Can't say that enough. So here is the uh, one of the USB cords. And this is a USB-C. Yep, you have multiple ways to connect. I like that they include the cords and the cord is long enough to go over and onto a boom arm to your computer. And there is the regular USB 3 and USB, a mini USB. The back of the microphone has a mini USB connection. Then they give you this extra thread so that you can use the mic on different size mic stands or mic boom arms. You don't know which one you're going to use, so they give you an extra um, way to connect the microphone. And I like that option. Okay, now I'm going to connect this to my computer, my laptop. I did this in the video because I knew I would be using it live because I'm using it now. This is the sound that you're hearing. It is this microphone, the MB7. So now I'm connecting it, USB. There's my laptop, nice long cord, remember? And I am plugging it in. Easy, easy. Then you're going to see the lights turn on. And there they are. There's the indicator. There's the microphone. Then if I had headsets connected, you would see the light for it. Then there is the mute button. I can mute the the mic right there on the microphone itself. The dots that you see, that is allowing you to change the gain, the volume, and you can do that. And it's also going to allow you to change the, the mix. When you have the headphones on or headset, you can change the mix between what you're hearing and your voice. And there's the lock feature. And they show you how to lock the settings once you have the right gain and the right mixture setting. You lock all your settings right there on the mic if you don't use the app. Here's another way uh, that I've created a video so that you can see how to connect it. So easy. So easy. In this case, it's now on a mic stand, and that mic stand is in the carousel. I love that mic stand. It's heavy duty. This is a mic, professional microphone that you can grow with. USB makes it easy to get started. And then when you want to go XLR because you're doing multiple interviews, you want to connect multiple microphones, you can do that with an interface. 
you can move up, scale up. Now, I promised you that I would show you the app. So here is the app that you can download and you can use on the left-hand side is the auto feature. This is the auto right here, auto levels. I'm using it in manual. When you go through each of the tabs, you will have the option to create different settings. And I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I want you to see that you can create presets, you can do the gain, you can mute the mic from the app, you can um, do equalization, you have a limiter, compressor, lots of features, and it's relatively easy to use. You just need to take your time to read the instructions and figure out how things work. You want to have a good live stream. You want good audio quality. You know that people will listen, right, more often when the audio is good. When you have good audio, people pay attention more. If the audio is not good, <laughs> you're going to have a challenge, right? So get good audio. So that is the MV7. Are you impressed? What do you think about the sound? I'm going to compare later with my previous microphone the difference between it and the MV7. So hang around so you can hear the difference. I have it all set up and ready to go. But I want to show you the stand that I was using to, to record that video. I'm going to highlight the stand in the carousel. Let me see if I can find it first. Where is it? Okay, it's the Gator Framework Stand. And I'll show that to you. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I think it's good to show it to you now. If I can find it, where is it? Mic stand. That's what I get for jumping ahead. Let's see. Here we go. Here it is. Here's the mic stand, Frameworks. It's a sturdy stand. It has a nice metal base with um, some nice soft rubber on the bottom so that you don't scratch the surface of your table. I like that and that's weighted. Then you have a nice metal column. This is metal and it has a clip so that the microphone cord can go through the clip. That top has two ways of threading the microphone. So you have options. There's the clip that you can clip on to, so that you can attach your microphone cord. And it's telescoping. You loosen that section and then you can extend the microphone stand. It's nothing to it, but it's a good quality heavyweight stand. I have purchased another stand here on Amazon that was a little less expensive, and you can tell, right? So I'm glad I invested in this one. This is another streamer who I saw had it, and I thought, let me check this out. And so I said, wow, here it is. You can see the length of it, right? Now, again, they offer two different thread sizes so that you can use it. I'm using mine actually, not for a microphone. I'm using it with my teleprompter. This is holding up my teleprompter. I'm using a microphone stand for my teleprompter and we're going to look at that later on. All right. So that is the stand. Speaking of teleprompter, let's go back. If you're just joining me, I am giving a studio tour to show you the things that I use to live stream. And this is what I am looking at. I am sitting right now in front of that table that you see in the photo. We just went through number one, which is the MV7. I'm using that microphone right now. Number two is the Rode PSA1 Plus. That plus is important. It's the plus boom arm. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to highlight it in the carousel if I can find it. There it is. It's the Rode PSA 1 Plus. And I have fallen in love with this boom arm. Let's take a look. So there it is. I attached it for video's sake to my kitchen table so that you can see it nice and clear. Once it's in the studio space, it's kind of hard to see. 
So I've made it so that you can see the arm. And look, I push it down. It stays in place. It doesn't bounce back up. You turn it and it's smooth, smooth, and it doesn't produce any noise that the mic can pick up. You raise it to whatever height you want. It stays in place. Easy, easy. I love it. There's a special sleeve that reduces the noise, the friction when you turn it, which I just pointed there with my finger. Let's do a quick unboxing. And I'll show you all the details because you can clip in the microphone cord. You can screw in the microphone without um, unscrewing it. You know how sometimes when you move the microphone and you readjust it, you're unscrewing it. You can't do that with this because you have two ways, one that tightens it and one that allows you to move the microphone to reposition without unscrewing it. So let's, let's unbox. So here it is. I think this was a great uh, combination for my new mic. I wanted a boom I didn't, and I wanted it overhead. I did not want something that was going to be at the surface of the table. I need some space on my table. My table's only four feet. So here we go. This is the big um, arm itself. It's well packed and it's metal, metal, metal. And again, you have multiple ways to connect your microphone. I like that manufacturers think of that. There's that special sleeve I talked about to minimize noise when you're turning the arm, make sure you read the instructions on that section because it is spring loaded. Read the instructions. And when you take that section off, you wanna make sure you have space. This is the table mount. It's a decent size. I like the top section that goes on top of the table. It's nice and big, it's not too small. And the part that goes underneath the table has a little rubber cap at the top. So it's not just metal digging into your table. So I like that. And if you already have an office type table that has a hole in it, they've included this extra um, attachment where you can put it inside of a table or you can drill a hole into a table for your mic if you would like to do that that is up to you but this is an option i opted to use the the clamp system i don't have a table and i don't plan to drill into my table so but i like having options so here it is remember spring loaded and so you want to make sure you open this up on a flat surface, a table, a floor. Don't hold it up, open it up in front of you because it can spring open and hit you. So you, it's, I put it in slow motion at this part of the video because I didn't want it to be too fast for you to see. I want you to be able to see how it it is spring loaded. So you want to be careful when you take that part off. It's all metal. And I love this boom arm. That's metal, metal, metal. The sleeve is nice. It's soft. The clips, it's the sleeves do not come off. That's the one thing. But that's all it takes. So here it is attached to my kitchen table just for you to do a little demo, video record it so you could see it. And then it just slides right in. It's a nice snug fit and it's easy to move without having noise. So there is my MV7 connected. And notice that the microphone position doesn't change even though I am moving the arm. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I can't say enough about how much I love it. And it has a nice, neat appearance. You see, that's the sleeve. That's, that's that noise, snug, canceling and there are the clips. You can clip in different sizes into there. And there's that special section I told you about where you can rotate the microphone without unscrewing it. I love it. <laughs> so what do you think? Isn't that an awesome arm? I love the features. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I have a lot of 
microphones in the carousel below because I want you to have options. I'm using the MV7, but I've also used before this, I used a Fee Fine USB mic. It was my first mic. I used it for two years. I'm going to highlight it in the carousel. We're just going to jump one over. It is on sale. It is $49.99, 17% off. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Let's see. Here it is when it was in my studio. Okay. It includes everything. It's USB. It has a shock mount. It has a arm. You can use it on a tabletop tripod that's included, which I have it attached to right now. So this is the same microphone. I have it attached with the included tabletop um, tripod. So I'm going to let you see or hear what it sounds like. But before we do that, let's look at what's inside the box. Let's look at what's inside the box. All right, we're going to go wide. So here's the box. So you get the microphone, like I said, with the included tabletop tripod. Here it is. Okay. You get a pop filter. And you also get the shock mount. This is the shock mount. Right here, I'm not going to take it out, but this is the, the arm. And then you get a clamp to clamp it to the table. So it's all inclusive. And I used this, and it produced, you know, decent sound. I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to hear what that's like. Let me put that back in. And then you get a wind screen. So you get pretty much everything you need to get started, live streaming, something all inclusive. All right, so here we go with our test. Are you paying attention? Right now you're listening to the MV7, which is in the carousel. Now I'm gonna let you listen to this microphone right here. This is the Fifine microphone. Let's take a look. All right, I changed microphones. Can you hear a difference? Let me know in the chat. Can you hear a difference? It's coming up in my sound levels. I can see that it's on. This is the Fifine microphone. Now I'm going to switch to the MV7. This is the MV7. Do you hear a difference? Do you hear a difference? Let me know. This is the MV7. This is the Fifine microphone or Fifine. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It is the USB microphone. I'm, this is the one that you're listening to right now. USB, you get everything you need to get started with live streaming or video calls or conference calls. You decide what you're going to use it for. Now I'm back at the MV7 and I'm using the MV7 on manual mode. If you're just joining me, you can slide to the beginning of the carousel and you'll see the MV7. Okay, so in addition to the whoops, Fifine microphone, there's another USB mic in the carousel right next to it. It is a Tonar. And the Tonar is very similar. And it includes, it's a USB mic, and it includes everything that you need. Again, pop filter right and if you're unfamiliar with what a pop filter means it's basically when the microphone is right here the pop filter will come right in front this would be the microphone my fist and it will minimize those p 
huffing plosive sounds with certain words like Peter Piper picked the peck of pickle peppers. That produces a puff of air and this will minimize that puff and sound. You're gonna get your shock filter, um, shock mount rather, wind screen. Again, you're gonna get everything you need. Here is the microphone. Okay, this has the volume control right here, the gain right there. And it's USB and then you have the arm. This is the arm on the inside so that you can mount it to your table. You get everything you need and here is for mounting to the table. Here's your USB cord. USB cord right here. All right, so. <clears throat> It's nice to have options, right? But what's important is to have decent audio when you live stream. You don't want people to leave your live stream because their ears can't <laughs> take bad audio, right? <laughs> All right, let's go back to the photo. If you're just joining me, we are doing a live stream studio tour. This is my studio. I'm streaming from this right now. This is in my sewing and crafting studio. Let's take a look at the video so you can see it. I'm gonna share with you, excuse me, the computer I use, the teleprompter, everything that I use to get this look that you see right now, including the lights. We went over the microphone and now we're going to look at um, some more of the things that I use to live stream. You can see my sewing machine back there because this is in my sewing and quilting studio, remember? And I found space where I thought I had none. You can create space to live stream. This can be done. You don't need a big space to do it. There are my lights, they're on the wall, they're mounted, no floor space because my space is small, so they're mounted to the wall like other people have done. So this is my studio. You can see my mic, MB7, my new Rode um, boom arm that I love, love, love. So. This is it. Let's go back to the still image. We went through number one. Number two is the boom arm. We did that. Number three is my overhead rig. The overhead rig, I'm using a cell phone. If I can use older technology to accomplish a task, I will do it. And that's what I've done here. Let's take a look at it. This is what my overhead rig is. It is with a man photo magic arm man photo magic arm i'm all and camera bracket the combo and i'm attaching the cell phone to the camera bracket the camera bracket is attached to the magic arm and the magic arm is connected to a super clamp that super clamp can be attached to anything, a shelf, a table. I have it attached to a photo stand. Whatever you want to do, you can attach this magic arm in multiple places. So I have two here in my studio. I have two of them. And I'm going to use the overhead rig right now to show you up close what this looks like. Let me move this out of the way. So this is the magic arm, right? You use this to tighten all the sections. When you tighten this down, this tightens, this tightens, all of this tightens. When you loosen it, now you can shift this around and reposition this section here. It's still a little bit tight. Let me loosen it a little bit more. So here it is. I can move this 
ball head right around, do a 90 degree angle, put it upright, and these are the two ends that I connect to the super clamp. This is the super clamp, and it goes right inside here. And then, remember I said I have two of these. This is the camera bracket. Of course, you can attach any camera to this. It could be a cell phone, it could be a webcam, it could be a, a digital SLR, it could be any camera. You're gonna use this screw right here to attach your camera. And that's the black one here. The gray section is what you're gonna tighten down so that it's nice and snug. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little soft pad here for the bottom of your camera to sit next to, so it's not metal against metal, it's soft. And this is the area where you're going to attach your uh, magic arm. So one end of this magic arm, I would put this on, and that's what I've done. Let me open this up a little bit and then you just tighten it down. Just that easy. And then you can reposition this any way you want. Let's take a look again. You can see how I have this set up over my table. And you may notice that there is a nice long cord. That's part of the Prime Early Access deal. I'll highlight that in the carousel for you. It's called the Anchor Power Line. It provides both data and power to my cell phone. Data and power. You want to make sure it does both. You're going to get the video feed, and then you're going to keep the cell phone powered while you're streaming. So that's what I am using, and I love it. Let me show you another way that I use this magic arm. Here is me using it over my sewing machine to record video, to record a course, to record content for social media, anything that I need to record me sewing. I can also use it live if I so choose because I have this long cord, right? I can easily do that. That's with the Manphoto Magic Arm. That's what you're looking at. I have two of these. So I can position them in actually three places. Sewing my sewing machine, my live streaming setup that I'm using now, and then over my cutting table, my work table. So I have three of these so I can film either stu stu stills or video with this magic arm. It's so versatile. I love it. And I did mention the super clamp. Let's look at the super clamp again. So here's the super clamp that I'm using. And it's easy to open and close. Remember, you can attach this to a table, to anything. It includes this so that you can actually attach a camera to it if you want. The super clamp can be used for multiple purposes. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to loosen this, right? And then you'll be able to move this, right? But there's a quick release button on this side. Until you press that quick release, this will not come out. Once I press the quick release, it comes out. In order to put it back in, I have to hold the quick release. I'm going to hold this, put that in, release it, and now it will not come out. To lock it down, you're going to screw this in to tighten it so this doesn't shift. So you can use this to mount a camera, mount anything you want. But what I've done, I've taken the super clamp and I put it inside here. Then I used this side to clamp it down to my photo stand and on a shelf when it's over my sewing machine. So this is the super clamp. 
All right, let's go back to the studio photo. So that is number three and number four. That's the magic arm and the super clamp that I just showed you. That's my overhead camera rig. That's how I get my top-down shots when I am teaching. Often, I will also um, use... Well, I use all the time now, but I didn't in the beginning. When I first live stream, I didn't have a teleprompter. That's number five. We're going to do number five and 5B. Number five is a teleprompter. I'm using that teleprompter right now, and I'm looking right into the lens because I have a monitor there that's allowing me to see what you see to monitor that you're seeing what you're supposed to see. But you can also use a teleprompter and it's the Glide Gear teleprompter. This is, I purchased two Glide Gears. I, this is the second one and this is the bigger one that's all metal and I love it because you can use it for multiple camera options. I always like to have something that I can, if I change my camera, I can still use it, right? So let's take a look at it. So this is the Glide Gear. It comes with a case. You can trans take it with you if you want. It's up to you. Mine is in a permanent spot. And you get everything you need. There you see my Nikon camera. You get the glass. It's easily adjustable for the glass. You get the tray in front. And the Velcro is already attached. You just have to close the hood and push down on the Velcro. In the back, you have a soft cloth black hood for your camera. And that's attached to the hood with a zipper on both sides. So you're able to zipper that nice and tight, light tight. You want that hood to be around your camera. Do you notice that base? That base is nice and long. It's metal. It has multiple um, holes on the bottom to attach to a stand for the glide gear, or you can use the included, the screw to put the camera in different positions. There you see me putting in my teleprompter monitor. I have a monitor inside the teleprompter. That's how I'm able to monitor the live stream. And also it can be used for scripts, if you want to use a teleprompter to read a script, you can do that. You can also use it for eye contact for like uh, Zoom meetings, other video call meetings, so that you maintain eye contact with those who are on the call. It includes this case with a strap, so you can take it with you if you so choose. It is up to you. You decide how you're going to use it. So I'm going to replay this again. Let's see, this is from the beginning. And then I'm gonna stop it so that you can see the camera that I'm using. I'm gonna stop it at that point so that you can see the camera. All right, there it is. I'm gonna highlight that in the carousel. If you're just joining me, I'm Geraldine Wilkins. I am a quilt teacher and educator and I live stream for various reasons on my social media channels. I do a live show. I also teach. And I was a photographer for a number of years, so I had a lot of gear. And this is an older camera. This is a Nikon D7200. I didn't know if it was going to work. So I figured, well, let me try. Meanwhile, I'm using a webcam to go live. But then once I figured out that this could work, I have a 14 millimeter lens that's also in the carousel. This is a digital SLR. It's an older camera. And sometimes these older cameras can work. It does have a mirror, so I have to use the mirror up feature, but no problem, right? Then I have a 14 millimeter lens and I'm using a dummy battery. If you don't know what a dummy battery is, it's basically a continuous power supply. It's plugged into my, my surge protector and battery backup and I get continuous power so I can get this video feed that you're seeing. And I will highlight that in the carousel. It's actually um, on sale, 20% off. 
you're going to get the one that suits your camera. Dummy batteries are important. You don't want to work on just regular batteries for your camera. You want to have continuous power. The other thing that I needed to be able to use this, not only was there, I need the dummy battery. I also needed an HDMI cord, mini HDMI from the camera to my computer. But before I can get to the computer, I needed a video capture card. I just highlighted that in the carousel, a 4K HDMI video capture card. So the HDMI cord from the camera went to that capture card. And then the capture card is connected to the computer so that you get this live video feed. That is my setup with the teleprompter. That's the camera. Now I bet you want to know about the monitor that I'm using. What is the monitor that I'm using with the teleprompter? I got the largest monitor that I could get to fit in this, and it's a 10-inch monitor. I wanted a nice big screen, but I also needed a monitor that would flip the text, flip the image so that it's readable, so that everything is to the right direction. And it's a lily put monitor. Let me find that here in the carousel. It's a little bit um, in the back, but I'm going to highlight it now. And then you're going to see it go inside the teleprompter. But I'm going to also show you a little video so you can see the features of the lily put. It is a field monitor that I am using with HDMI. There it goes. It's going right there in the teleprompter, but it is a field monitor that you can use with your camera. So let's take a look at it. This is the Lilliput monitor. It is a fabulous investment. I'm so glad that I invested in it. It has changed the way I live stream. There's that important menu. That's where you're going to flip the screen. You have multiple connection points. You have SDI in and out, VGA. You have HDMI in and out, and I'm using HDMI in. And of course, it's powered. It is plugged directly into a power cord outlet. It is powered, no batteries. There is that screw mount I mentioned because it is a field monitor. This can be taken out of the teleprompter and used with a camera. It could be put on a camera or on a stand. And there it goes right into my teleprompter. I use my teleprompter mostly for, uh, it's a confidence monitor as a way of creating eye contact with my audience. I think that's important. I wanna be able to have that eye contact with you. Let me know if you're watching, if you have any questions. Let's go back to the studio photo. We just did number five and 5B. That's the teleprompter. This is my studio, how I live stream. I'm hoping that the tools, the tech that I use can help you with your live streaming efforts. Number six is a laptop. It is a MacBook uh, mini. And I'm going to highlight one that is on deal. It is the deal of the day. It's a 2020 Apple Mac M1 Air. My MacBook Air is an older model, but MacBook Airs are fantastic. And so when I saw it was on deal, I had to put it in the cart for you. And I'm going to show you how I'm using my MacBook Air. You can see it's right underneath my teleprompter. Let's take a look. So here it is. Oh, too bad for you. Too bad for you. Too bad for you. So here it is. Right there. There is, let's see. There we go. You can see it right here with my teleprompter. And there is the MacBook 
air. It is on deal. I love that we can use old and new tech together. You don't have to get all new tech. You can use some of the things that you already have and you can be successful. So I love that. Let's go back to host view. Okay, so here we go. What is next in the carousel? And I love this. This is the stream deck. You know how I've been going back and forth, back and forth between one scene and the other? I've been using a stream deck to do that. It's like having presets that you can program to go back and forth to different scenes. I love the stream deck because I can create shows like this one to create B-roll to help you get access to those videos very easily and quickly. And so it makes it easier for me to quickly run a show. And I'm going to use this again to help you see what that looks like. So here is the stream deck and I'm using the stream deck right now. I'm going to press a button so that you can see what that looks like. So here is the stream deck and I press this button to come to my Logitech camera. And then I have a number of scenes that are coordinating with my streaming software. So here are the different scenes that have the videos and I'm using the stream deck to actually hit those particular scenes. Same with, thing with like my overhead camera. I have two different overhead camera shots. I when I want to show you something on the Amazon site, I will just hit that button. This is to come back to me. I'm going to press that right now and it's just going to come right back to me. Easy, easy. Then I'm going to press the Logitech and you can get not only, this is the extra large, this is 32 keys, but there's also a 15 key and a six key. I like the extra large because it allows me to stay on one screen for an entire show. The necessary things that I need. Now, I can hit this home button and then these keys work with my computer to open a browser, to uh, go to my website, to open the calculator app on my computer, to increase the volume, you can determine and program each of these keys to do whatever you want. I'm going to go back to the show. And so I am back and I'm going to make sure that I have the right keys set. Now this works with an app on your computer. And so you want to make sure that you are using the right um, setup. So I have multiple setups. And this is Studio Tour. So I'm going to make sure that says Studio Tour. You, it's in, It includes software. So I'm going to go back to Host View. I love the Stream Deck. I am able to create multiple shows using the Stream Deck, being able to create the scenes and save it as a separate show. It saves so much time. I love it. I love it. All right, let's go back. And it's 12% off. Take advantage of that. Let's go back to the studio tour. And so number seven was the stream deck. Eight is the computer. I wanted a robust computer that was going to handle a live stream with good internet access. You really need good internet I have the Mac M1 Mini. I'm going to highlight that in the carousel. And let's take a look at it. I am using every connection in the back. Power. There's my Ethernet connection. There's two peripheral devices that help me connect other devices. Then I have two monitors. And back then I used it to connect my USB microphone. All of them are connected. It works seamlessly. It's fantastic. I love it, love it, love it. It's one of the best things that I invested in was getting this Mac dedicated Mac M1 Mini for live streaming. 
Now let's go back to um, the studio photo. So there's the studio. In order to get the Mac One M1 Mini working, you need a monitor, that's number nine, and you need a keyboard, a mouse, or tracking pad, that's 10 and 11. You want to get what's gonna work for your space. Some use the streaming software with a laptop. I wanted a desktop type computer. That's what I opted for. I wanted a permanent spot that I could come to any day of the week and live stream. So number 10 and number nine, nine, 10 and 11. Let's look at those real quick. First, let's look at the monitor. That is a ViewSonic 27 inch. I opted for one monitor, one large, relatively large one, not too small. I wanted one big enough to be able to hold everything I need it when I'm live streaming so that it's not um, too small. I can read it from where I'm sitting. If it was a smaller, like, you know, a 20 inch, uh, 12 inch, it would have been too small, right? A 27 inch is just right for me in terms of being able to read and have nice big <clears throat> things open on the, on the screen. So I like that. The other thing is the keyboard. Let's take a look at that. Again, this is going to be personal preference. It is Bluetooth capable, but I always plug it in. I like direct power. I like the numeric keypad. And then I like using a tracking pad. I like using a tracking pad. Um... So that is going to be a personal preference, <clears throat> excuse me, whether you want a tracking pad or if you want a mouse. That is your choice. All right. So that is the computer that I'm using. And let's look at our photo again of the studio. So we've gone through everything up to number 11. Number 12 are the lights, the lights. What lights am I using? I'm using Niwa Bicolor lights. And again, I have them mounted on the wall. Let's take a look at these Niwa lights. It's a bicolor set that includes everything. Two stands, two lights, you get two soft boxes, it's easy to use. There's the buy color. You can go warm or cool. You set the dial. You can use batteries, but again, I plug it in directly into power. Let me highlight this in the carousel. It includes a softbox, and there goes the, the 660 lights. And then uh, it's easy to attach the soft light soft boxes or the barn doors that is up to you which you use i like the soft boxes and they're easy to attach no problem i love these love them love them love them and they're out of the way when i'm not streaming i just turn them off since they're permanent all i have to do is just Turn them on when I'm ready to stream. And you get to decide whether you want the barn doors or you want to use the softbox. It includes the U bracket, everything you need to set up a lighting studio. You get instructions. You get a diffuser if you want to use that to soften the light, especially if you're going to use the included barn doors. The barn doors are, are all metal. It's well-made. It's well-made. I like having something well-made. So I've included two Niwa sets so that you can decide which one uh, might work for you. One set does not include the soft boxes. It only has barn doors. This set includes the soft boxes. And you get two cases with both so i like having the case and you get a case for the stands as well so you decide which ones are going to work for you 
Now, we've talked about a lot of equipment. A lot of things are plugged in. How do you protect that? How do you protect your equipment from surge protection and if the electricity goes out? I like to have a surge protector and I have the cyber power. The cyber power is digitized display. When you turn it on, there's the power button. I'm going to turn that on and then you're going to get a digital display. It's going to tell you how much power is in the battery backup. Then it's going to tell you how many minutes you have with the amount of power that is remaining. Then you're going to hit that display button again, and you're going to get the information that tells you what power is coming into your home, the hertz, the voltage, everything. And then you hit the display button again, it's going to tell you what's going from the cyber power to your devices. So you know just by pressing a button what is going to your devices and it's going to protect it from surge protection. And then if the power goes out, depending upon how much it's charged, you have time to save your critical information or your project that you're working on on your computer, whatever it is that you're doing. It doesn't have to be a computer. I have surge protectors for my sewing machine. I have it for all kinds of things. So I love having that. Now, um, what else we have here? Let me go back to our photo here of the studio. Let's see, it's right here at the top. That surge protector is being used to protect all of this gear, okay? It has 12 outlets on it. And I want to show that to you, what that looks like. Let's take a look on the back because it's in use. So we're going to go to the Amazon site. Here's the Amazon site that shows you on one side, there are six outlets that are white that have all surge protection and battery backup. So you get six. On the right-hand side, you have a white outline around the outlet. That white outline indicates that it's surge protection only. Not all battery backups are the same. You want to get one that's going to be the right amount of protection for your devices. And don't cut it close. Make sure you have enough, okay? So that you know your devices are well protected. The next thing that you want to do for your studio, if you are live streaming, you are recording content, a lot of content. You need storage. You need storage to store your videos, to store your personal documents, to store your business documents, your family photos. And so I got a Weston Digital 12 terabyte storage 12 terabytes sounds like a lot until you start to work in video and <laughs> you're going to have a need for a lot of storage. So here's my Western Digital. It comes formatted for PC. I have a Mac and you can reformat it for your Mac. No problem. It has only three things in the back that you need to concern yourself with. Is One is the power connection. The second is the connection to your computer and then this button that turns it on and off. And there's a QR code for you to get more information about your the product. Once you plug it in, the computer is going to recognize it. And if it's Mac like me, it's easy peasy to format it for Mac. It's not hard to do. You do not need to be tech savvy. All right, so what is next in the carousel? Now, I like to give you options. So that's 12 terabytes. Maybe you don't need that much storage. So we have some deals of the day. We have a Western Digital 2 terabyte instead of 12. Maybe you only need two. And that is on deal. It is 48% off. Don't miss out on that deal. Then right next to that is a one terabyte. 
and that is also on sale. That is 32% off. Do you need 12 terabytes, two, or one? How much storage do you need? Now, the amount of storage you need really depends on a lot of things. You want not only external storage for your devices, your phone, your laptop, your desktop computer. You also want redundancy in your storage because things fail, things crash, right? So you don't want to store just in one place. You want to have double, sometimes triple places where the same thing is being stored. Cloud-based storage, external storage in your home, all kinds of ways that you can store your content. You decide what's going to work for you. That's what I did. I got something that's 12 terabytes and that is working for me. And I use actually... The Samsung, I'm gonna show you how I use the Samsung one terabyte. I use it for quick access. Like the video you're watching, you see it flashing, that little light that's flashing. All the videos that you've been watching in this live stream are coming from a one terabyte SSD, this SSD, um, Samsung storage. So instead of crowding my computer that has limited space with video, I put all the video on this external device. And when I need to show it during a live stream, I just show it from that external drive. Easy, easy, one way to have a lot of videos without taking up storage on your main computer. So I have multiple one terabytes just for that purpose and for redundancy. So that is one way that I use the storage. Okay, let's go back to the studio. If you're just joining me, I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter, and I've been sharing my studio space, hoping that some of the tools that I use for live streaming can help you if you are going to live stream or if you are. Do you need to update your audio, microphone, your in-ear monitoring? Take advantage of these prime early access sales to upgrade your streaming studio or get started. I showed you how I do my overhead shots. I'm doing this in the space that I have. You can create a streaming space, a permanent space anywhere and use the space that you have. It does not have to have a lot of tech. It can just be minimal tech. It's up to you to decide what tools you need to get the results that you want. What is your purpose? Why do you need to live stream? Are you recording video? I record video in this spot as well. So I use this for Zoom calls, I use this for live video, I use this for teaching, I use it for recording classes. I knew that I needed a permanent spot that I could use any time of the day to record video, to join a meeting. And I've combined old tech with new tech. Old tech with new tech. Sometimes the old tech will work, sometimes it will not. <laughs> And <clears throat> when it doesn't, you just get some newer tech. Easy peasy, right? So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for joining me. I will see you tomorrow for day two of Prime Early Access. I hope that you were able to get some good deals today, whether from me and my carousel. There are plenty down there. In the carousel, take a look, see if you see anything that you need for your streaming studio. If not, I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to be here again sharing some more of these awesome, awesome deals. Thank you for joining me. I will see you next time for another live streaming tour for Quilt Conversations Live. Now, before I sign off, any questions? Any questions about the studio? I want to make sure I answer any questions. All right. If not, I'm going to go. Thank you very much. See you next time.